hello friends welcome to engineering tutorial so this is another question on projectile motion with horizontal projection the question is a hiker stands on the edge of a cliff which is 490 meters above the ground and uh, he throws a stone horizontally with an initial speed of 15 meter per second neglecting air resistance find the time taken by the stone to reach the ground and the speed with which it strikes the ground okay so we have to find that so first let us you know draw the diagram to understand the situation so here we have let's say a cliff which is 490 meters above the ground okay now a hiker is standing on the top of the cliff and he throws a stone with a horizontal initial speed of 15 meter per second okay this this is the initial speed now nothing has been mentioned about acceleration due to gravity so we'll take acceleration due to gravity which is acting downwards uh, that will be 9.8 meter per second square now here again we have to take into account the principle of independence of motion so this uh, you know stone it will move in this way like this a parabolic path now we can divide it into two motions motion along the x-axis and motion along the y-axis because it undergoes a horizontal displacement from the initial point to final point this is the horizontal displacement okay sx and it also undergoes it also undergoes a vertical displacement which is this from the top to bottom so this is the vertical displacement we can write it as sy 490 meter and this is sx we are asked to find the time taken by the stone to reach the ground so here for the vertical motion this will be the acceleration ay it will be plus g that is plus 9.8 meter per second square so we know the first equation of motion sorry uh, the second equation of motion which is s is equal to ut plus half at square this we will write it for the y axis that is sy is equal to uit plus one half a y t square now here if you see the stone has only horizontal initially the stone has only horizontal component the hiker he threw the stone horizontally so there was no vertical component no initial vertical component so the initial vertical component is zero and this is the horizontal component ux ui is zero so this whole term uit it will become zero so we'll have sy is equal to one half a y t square so here we have determined sy is 490 a y is plus g that is 9.8 meter per second square that is 1 by 2 into 9.8 into t square that implies t square is equal to 2 into 490 by 9.8 that implies t is equal to the root over of this much okay t will be simply 
the root over of this much root over of 2 into 490 by 9.8 so this is 980 by 9.8 that is root over of 100 okay so this is that implies t is equal to root over of 100 which is equal to 10 seconds so if you see this 10 seconds the time which is asked for the stone to reach the ground this is nothing but the time of flight of the stone or the projectile this if you recall the formula in the derivation part in our discussion related to horizontal projection we you know derived a formula time of flight which is 2 h by g so you can use this formula directly if you remember the formula if you you know you are able to recall it then you can use it directly and save all this uh, you know uh, thing it will minimize the time but in case you forget the formula it's always easy to understand the derivation how we got the formula so that way if you you know forget the formula which can happen sometime so you are able to again reach the same formula through derivation so this is time of flight which we calculated 10 seconds the first part of the question next is with what velocity will the stone or the object it will strike the ground now here if you see the stone has initial horizontal component of 15 meter per second now here there is no acceleration no you know no force which is acting on the horizontal direction which is either supporting the motion of the stone or opposing it in the horizontal direction okay in the vertical direction we have acceleration due to gravity which is supporting the downward motion but for the horizontal motion there is nothing so acceleration along the horizontal direction that is 0 meter per second square so as acceleration is 0 it means no change in velocity so the horizontal component it will be constant throughout no matter where the stone is the horizontal component will always be the same vx is equal to ux here also vx is equal to ux and even if it reaches the ground the horizontal just before it hits the ground the horizontal component will remain the same but just before hitting the ground just before hitting the ground at this spot the vertical component vy we can calculate it using the formula the first equation of motion that is v is equal to u plus a t okay so we'll write it for the y axis using the y components that is v y is equal to u y plus a y t and here this t is the time of flight the total time for which the stone was in the air just before hitting the ground i mean this is the time of flight that we'll use which is equal to 10 seconds here because we want to calculate the final velocity the vertical final vertical velocity of the stone just before hitting the ground so we have to take this time of flight duration so ui is zero as we all know the initial vertical component was zero so vy is equal to simply ayt which is equal to gt which is 9.8 or gtf okay gtf this 9.8 into 10 is equal to 98 meter per second okay so here if we draw the graph just before hitting the ground the stone it has a horizontal component vx which is equal to ux 15 meter per second and a vertical component 
that is equal to how much vy is equal to 98 meter per second so the resultant this okay okay this is the resultant velocity which is equal to vx square plus vy square root over so that is equal to v is equal to 15 square plus 98 square which is equal to it is coming around 99.1 okay 99.1 okay meter per second okay this is the result 99.1 meter per second this is the final velocity of the stone just before hitting the ground so here we have calculated the time of flight and the velocity just before hitting the ground okay so here is another question on projectile motion with uh, horizontal projection it is given that a packet is dropped from a helicopter when it is directly above that is on top of a man standing on the ground and it is at a height of 1000 meter from the ground that is from the uh, from the point where the man is stand, standing vertically above the aeroplane sorry the it is the helicopter sorry uh, by mistake I have written aeroplane so it is helicopter okay the helicopter is moving horizontally with a speed of 500 kilometers per hour how far away from the person will the packet fall so again first we have to draw the diagram to depict this situation so that we can understand what uh, this is all about okay sorry this Okay. So we have a helicopter okay, which is uh, 1000 meter above the ground okay this it is 1000 meter above the ground the person is standing on the ground it is moving with a horizontal velocity of 500 kilometers per hour and here a package is dropped so it will also have the same horizontal velocity same as the helicopter so it will undergo projectile motion like this instead of directly falling towards the person it will fall certain distance away from it because the velocity of the packet will be the same as the instant the velocity of the helicopter which was uh, you know in which it was at the instant where it was dropped so initially the velocity of the helicopter is horizontal 500 km per hour so the packet velocity will also be that at the instant when it is dropped so it will undergo projectile motion with horizontal projection that way so the package velocity will also be u equals to 500 kilometer per hour okay the velocity of the helicopter is equal to velocity of the packet so it will drop let's say here so we want to find out this horizontal distance between the man and the packet again basic analysis will split it into two parts x and y components so first here this height above the ground it is the 
vertical displacement or the net vertical distance covered by the package and this horizontal distance it is the net horizontal displacement of the packet okay then this uh, package velocity horizontal velocity it is the initial horizontal velocity it has no component in the vertical direction so ui is equal to 0 meter per second again we have to convert it into meter per second because everything else is in meters so always convert it into one unit then uh, acceleration due to gravity acting downwards nothing is mentioned so it is plus g that is 9.8 meter per second square and there is no acceleration or retardation in the horizontal direction so ax is equal to 0 meter per second square okay so this is the thing now what we have to do is we have to apply the equations of motion basic equations of motion so here sy is equal to uyt plus one half ayt square so here we'll make the substitutions ui is zero so this whole term will become zero ay is equal to g okay and sy is equal to h that is 1000 meter okay ay is equal to g that is 9.8 meter per second square now here for this whole vertical dis uh, displacement we covered this time will be equal to t equal to time of flight so it will be h is equal to one half g tf square that implies tf is equal to root over of 2h by g okay this is the formula of time of flight if you remember so that is equal to 2 into 1000 by 9.8 okay so it is coming around 14.285 okay 14.3 seconds so it's uh, sometimes better to write it in up to two or three decimal points so this is the time of flight now the horizontal velocity ux that is equal to 500 kilometer Per hour so we have to convert it into meter per second so 500 into 1 kilometer is equal to 1000 meter by 1 hour is equal to 60 minutes 1 minute is equal to 60 seconds so it is 60 into 60 second that is 3600 seconds so uh, we have to convert it into that so ux that is equal to it is coming 138.88 meter per second okay 138.88 meter per second this is coming so we have the horizontal velocity we have the time of flight now we have to con uh, find out this horizontal distance which is nothing but the horizontal range okay now range that is the horizontal distance or displacement with that is equal to the horizontal velocity multiplied with the time of flight so that is equal to 138.88 into 14.285 so it is coming around 1984 
0.13 meters this is the horizontal distance that is this much far away from the person the packet will fall okay so again this is the basic uh, solution here all you have to do is understand the application of equations of motion and the principle of independence of motion in projectile motion that is split the whole situation into two parts y axis analysis separate x axis analysis separate okay and everything every parameter which is involved vector parameter that is velocity acceleration displacement it will have two separate components x and y okay x is applicable for x y is applicable for y okay so this is